Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Thursday, February the 3rd, 2022. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here to go over a six-game NBA main slate for this evening's action. Very excited for this slate. Love the matchups. We have some, some good player news already. And as always, we're expecting more to drop as the day goes on. Uh, very bizarre here. I'm looking out of my office here out onto uh, this wonderful Dallas skyline, and it's snowing. So we are getting a bunch of snow here in Dallas, which is very bizarre. Uh, and we'll see what happens. As long as we don't lose power like last year, uh, I'm cool with it. But uh, I'm sure in, wherever you're listening, uh, I know there's a lot of parts of the Northeast uh, really getting hit hard. So stay warm, everybody. Stay safe. Stay off the roads if you can. And uh, just watch a bunch of basketball. That's exactly what I plan on doing. So, all right. We have, again, a, a great six-game slate here. It's spread out throughout the night, which is nice. The first game starting at 7 and then there's a couple of games at 10 o'clock. So we get a full night of NBA action, which is great. Coming off a really nice night last night, uh, we ended up pulling out uh, some, some nice victories. We had that brutal Isaiah Jackson injury 22 seconds into the game, but most of the field did out there. So uh, we were able to overcome some of that. But luckily, uh, I had faded him on our, our main fan duel lineup, and uh, we were able to get to our number there. And then we provided, uh, I think I mentioned it on the podcast yesterday, we provided an extra uh, after hour slate because we had three games on that slate. And that's the one where we smashed. Uh, we ha I had a little, nice little takedown there, and uh, we really got it done. So we have got some momentum going. We want to continue that today. Uh, the nice part is, you know, no days this week with just a couple of games. I love how they scheduled it. Six games tonight is perfectly fine. Uh, then we get more into my wheelhouse uh, on Friday with nine games. So I'm excited. I'll be here tomorrow as well. Saturday is going to be fun. Uh, definitely my favorite podcast of the week with Josh Crash Davis Saturday morning. And then I'm jumping on a live stream at two in the afternoon. Um, actually three Eastern, two Central, with uh, my brother there, Gundacker. We're going to uh, start attacking a Saturday duo of uh, Gundacker and Coach going after it. So uh, that should be fun as well. So it's going to be a great couple of days of basketball here. And uh, let's start it off with today's first game. It is the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's a 7 o'clock game, by the way. And it is the... Um, I got to switch back. I went to tomorrow's to look ahead to make sure we were checking out all the important first and second days of double headers. Uh, that first game again, seven o'clock, Minnesota Timberwolves at Detroit Pistons. Minnesota favored by seven. It's a 228 total, 117 and a half for Minnesota, 110 for Detroit. So solid total right off the jump here. Minnesota comes in 26 and 25, Detroit 12 and 38. As far as injury designations, we have Pat Beverly probable. Uh, D'Angelo Russell's the big one. He's questionable. So we will have that news. That will help. Uh, we know that Balmaro and Akogi are out. For Detroit, just as big a news. Cade Cunningham questionable. So, you know, knowing uh, that news we'll have, which thank goodness we're going to need. Um, also, we have Josh Jackson, questionable livers and picket are out. So statistically here, a quick glance, Minnesota's third in pace, Detroit 11th. That's why you've got that solid 228 total. Defensively, Minnesota hanging in the middle of the pack at 14. Detroit not that good at 22. So, again, we need that news on those two guys. It's key. Um, but prices that are decent, Pat Bev at 4.8 is fair. Um, Anthony Edwards at 8K will be much more in play for me if D'Angelo does sit. Jared Vanderbilt at 5.5 can get there. Cat at 10 flat is not a bad buy-up either uh, if this game stays close and if D'Angelo's out because the usage gets around there. If Russell sits, you know, you've got 
couple of bench guys you could think about in Beasley and Noel would not go back to Torian Prince after that incredible slate that he had the other day. I think he had almost a 50 burger out of completely nowhere. So I will not be chasing Torian Prince at 4-4. Uh, I, I don't see how he replicates that. Um, for Detroit, it's been a little bit of a point guard split between Corey Joseph and Killian Hayes, which eliminates my interest. If Cade sits, though, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a different rotation there. I would say Josh Jackson would dump, jump in, but he's might not play either. So you, if you want to go deeper, you can look at a Frank Jans, Jackson or Rodney Magruder. They're both, uh, you know, Jackson's 3-8 and Magruder's the, the min at 3, but really don't need to go there, in my opinion. I think more of that usage will, will get back to Sadiq Bey at 6-2, You'll get a little bit of Isaiah Stewart at 4-7 if he can stay out of foul trouble against Cat. Um, Diallo maybe will jump back into the starting lineup uh, if uh, Cunningham sits, uh, which would be a decent play at 4-4. Um, Kelly Olynyk's back, though. Jeremy Grant's back. So Detroit's a little bit tougher to get to here. Uh, depending on the news, maybe a one-off. Uh, but I do want definitely some uh, representation from the Minnesota side. All right, game two. By the way, uh, Detroit's on the first night of a back-to-back -back in that game, so something to mention there. Uh, Minnesota, it's an island game. All right, game two, 7.30, so we only have the one 7 o'clock start. 7.30, Chicago Bulls at the Toronto Raptors. Toronto minus three, 224 total, 110.5 Chicago. 113 and a half for the Toronto Raptors. Both teams are on the first night of a back to back. They both play tomorrow. So that is something that, uh, you know, we need to, to take a look at, especially the veterans uh, and what those rotations are going to look like if anybody's losing any minutes. And it very well could be that case. You know, we need to follow uh, Levine, DeRozan, Vuk. Uh, and, you know, Toronto, I don't know if it affects much. Nurse said he was going to that 10 game, uh, 10 man rotation. That hasn't happened. He's still playing his guys big minutes, but uh, we'll see. I think he's got to at some time uh, slow down uh, the minutes there and use a bench. It's just not logical to keep pounding these guys. Uh, Chicago is 32 and 18. Toronto is 26 and 23. Zach Levine probable. And then guys that are out, Ball, Caruso, Jones, Williams. And then for Toronto, only two guys out, Birch and Dragic. Uh, you know, interesting here because you've got a couple of things that play uh, in your favor and, and a few that play against. Again, that first night of a back-to-back -back for both isn't a help. Uh, but you do have the 15th pace team in Chicago, which is average. Toronto not playing fast at all at 26. Defensively, Chicago's all the way down to 19th. They have really fallen on hard times since Ball and Caruso went out. Uh, they were a top 10 defensive team. Uh, Toronto is only 16. So, you know, pace not great, but defense not great either. So there are some possibilities here. Uh, Desunmu at 5-6 can get there. Levine, of course, at 8-9, DeRozan 9-2, and Vuk 9-1. You've got your three pay-up guys. Um, can you, you could definitely pluck one out that you think is going to have the best matchup. I believe Ananobi is going to guard DeRozan, and Barnes, uh, you know, Barnes may uh, guard Levine. He's been guarding uh, basically one through four, uh, Barnes has, Um which would leave Siakam on Vuk unless they bring a Chua in. So a lot of different possibilities here, a lot of rotations. I'm not ecstatic about buying up uh, to the, the Chicago guys. Um, and Toronto, you got to love the minutes they play. You know, uh, Desunmu's a good young defender. Uh, there's definitely the chance that he could guard Van Vliet. Uh, Van Vliet at 8'8 is a bit steep. But, you know, he's been getting to his number often. Trent's up to 6'1", which when he was in the fives was a lot more comfortable. Uh, but he can be considered. Uh, and Anobi's had a few good games, you know, in the last couple of weeks, but not that consistency 
uh, that we had been seeing. So, you know, maybe he's a guy that it's time to pop him right before he uh, starts getting those big numbers again. But uh, so far at 7-2, that's a bit of a risk. Scotty Barnes, same thing, 6-8. Ever since he missed that period of time, it seemed to really slow him down statistically. But he's playing hard. He's playing good defense. And he's a guy, it's just a matter of time, uh, that should really get to his number. And 6-8 is, is fair. Uh, he's in consideration for me. Pascal Siakam at nine is hard to pass up to because Vuk is not a good big man defender. Um, they may put, uh, you know, bring somebody off the bench to try to slow him down a little bit like a Troy Brown. Uh, but really Siakam, I'm not a big Siakam fan right now. He just let me down a couple of times. But at 9K with this matchup, he might not be a bad play whatsoever for one of your uh, buy up options and you know buying up to him at nine or buying up to somebody at 12 uh, makes a big impactful difference so he's in kick into consideration for me for sure all right we have one other 730 game it's the phoenix suns at the atlanta hawks phoenix minus five 223 total 114 for the suns and 109 for the atlanta hawks uh, Phoenix comes in 41 and 9, Atlanta 24 and 26. Uh, island game for Phoenix, first night of a back to back for Atlanta. De designations injury wise, you've just got a bunch of guys out for Phoenix, but four guys probable. So we believe we're going to see Crowder, Aiton. Oh, I'm sorry, just Crowder and Aiton are the two probable. Uh, so they may have their regular starting lineup of Paul Booker, Bridges, Crowder, and Aiton. The guys that are out are Kaminsky, Nader, Payne, Sarich, and Shamit. So uh, Phoenix had no centers there for a while. Now it looks like they're going to have Aiton, Biombo, McGee, and Smith. So, wow, you know, good luck getting uh, value from any of those guys, uh, even Aiton, because I think they're going to, really try to give people minutes. Biombo's earned it. Uh, usually they like to get McGee in there a little bit. Uh, the rookie uh, Smith's probably not going to uh, get any minutes. I'm sure he's out of the rotation. Um, for Atlanta, the big thing is, is Trey Young. He's questionable, changes everything, obviously, in the entire game, uh, up, down, sideways, and backwards. I mean, you have to know if he's in or out because it brings everybody else into play uh, if he sits. Um, DeAndre Hunter is probable, so that is uh, a good thing there. As far as uh, statistically, Phoenix ninth in pace, Atlanta 19th. They're playing a little bit faster than they were. Defensively, big difference here. Phoenix second and gaining on Golden State for a most defensive efficient team in the league. Atlanta 27th. So uh, you've got a big pace up game for Atlanta but they have to play a tough defense. Uh, you have a pace down for Phoenix, but they get, get to go against uh, a lousy defense. So split split decision here, as they say. It's a tough call. I mean, Chris Paul has been fantastic, but he's a, a big 9-7 number now, so it's a big commitment there. Devin Booker's also been great, and he's but he's 9-3. So if you want to go with one of those two guys, it makes perfect sense. If Trey doesn't play, I'm I would be a little more concerned of Phoenix uh, handing it to him. Again, it's on the road in Atlanta. Phoenix is only a five point Vegas spread, so you don't want to jump the gun on that. But it is a thought, you know, when when you've got uh, those guys because there's some veterans on this team, and Monty Williams is not going to uh, play them the extra minutes if not needed. He, I mean, he's a smart coach. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, he had a huge game the other day, bust out game. He's 6'4", though, now, so his price is up. Jay Crowder has been very, very hit or miss, 4'2". Been splitting some time with Cam Johnson at 5'1", which makes them uh, difficult to play. And then all those bigs that we talked about with the four centers uh, for Phoenix. So for me, it's pretty easy if I go mid-level with Bridges. Uh, or buy up for one of the guards in Paul or Booker. And that's going to depend on if Trey Young is in or out. If Trey Young does play, 9-9 is a little high for that tough 
Phoenix defense and for Chris Paul for me. Um, but if he sits, you know, you've got guys you have to really consider here. Kevin Herter at 4-5, DeAndre Hunter at 4-4. Four, four. Uh, Bogdanovich is starting to get it together. He's 4-9. Uh, so there's some good options there at, at very fair prices. So uh, definitely some guys to consider. John Collins at 6-3. I mean, he's got to that number some time, you know, a few times recently. Uh, where he's looked really good, but he's gets some of that tough interior defense, uh, some Jay Crowder, and then those bigs uh, that they always have one of those shot blocking bigs in there. Um, Phoenix has done a great job putting that roster together. They're tough. Clint Capella at five nine. I mean, I just don't remember the last time I said, "Wow, Clint Capella just smashed the slate." So, uh, you know, those twenty twenty five rebound games seem to be a thing of the past. I don't know if it's, you know, he had mentioned he wanted out of there. He's not too happy in Atlanta. You know, maybe his skill set is just, you know, falling along the wayside that he's getting a little older. Uh, you know, you never know. Some of these guys are playing with some injuries. I mean, just not a guy that I feel comfortable uh, rostering. All right. Three down, three to go. Real quickly, if you want to join us, dfscoachtalk.com. That stands for Daily Fantasy Sports, DFSCoachTalk.com. We are one, one and only type of uh, provider in the industry. We're going to be there with you in the four main sports, basketball, football, baseball, and golf. We're going to give you podcasts and a lot of information. We've uh, partnered with Pro Football Focus, Sports Data IO. We have all kinds of analyzation analytics. Our man, John Wehausen, always breaking up the numbers for us, putting in projections and ownership and all of the pieces that go to building lineups. But why we're different is we hand build everything. Uh, we don't think people generally have the money to spend 10, 20 grand a night mass entering 150 contests on all the sites. We're going to give you strong one or two lineups that we're hand building specifically for a cash and single entry lineup and then a GPP multi-entry lineup. And we're going to do that on FanDuel and Yahoo. And then we're going to give you something exclusive to us, which is the coach's clipboard, where you're going to get five guys highlighted to develop that DraftKings lineup and then a bunch of other guys that you can choose from to fill that lineup out. So again, I don't think you really can find what we're uh, producing for our members on a daily basis. We'd love to have you try us out. Come on, jump in. Three days, 10 bucks. Give it a try. Great day to do it this way. You can be with us uh, into the weekend here. Uh, we've got some weekend golf lineups that come out tomorrow. And then, of course, uh, all of our uh, NBA action. So jump on the wave here, dfscoachtalk.com. Also, if you're watching this right now on uh, YouTube, quick thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and give us a quick comment. We'd really appreciate that. That helps us move up the algorithm on YouTube. Also, hit the little bell button in the upper corner. That'll alert you when any of our podcasts post. And if you're listening audio-wise, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Podbean, Stitcher, wherever, we're everywhere podcasts land. So uh, take a second, give us a top rating and quick comment. And we have a drawing at the end of each month for a one week free membership to Coach Talk. All right, three games to go right after them here. We've got an hour break for the next start at 8.30. And then we have an hour and a half break for two games at 10 o'clock. The 8.30 game is the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs. Miami's favored by four and a half. It's a 220 total. 112.25 for Miami and 107.75 for the San Antonio Spurs. Miami comes in 32 and 20. San Antonio at 19 and 33. Uh, it is an uh, island game for Miami. First night of a back to back for the Spurs, which always puts you in the you're going to get pop zone from Mr. Greg Popovich, coach. Uh, you never know what he's going to do with back-to-backs, let alone any other time. And there's some key guys questionable. So it's going to be a tough one to figure, but we're going to do our best to do it. 
All right, Miami, uh, just Jimmy Butler questionable. No big news there, of course. Uh, P.J. Tucker, also questionable. Um, Kyle, Kyle Lowry is now questionable. He's been out for quite a while. And we add Caleb Martin to the mix as questionable. So huge news there. I mean, you're talking three starters, uh, four starters, really. Butler, Lowry, Martin, and Tucker have started uh, games together uh, along with Bam in some instances. So four of the possible starters, more more than likely uh, two with Butler and Tucker. But the bottom line is there's going to be a lot of shuffling of the deck there that we need to know. We already know that Morris, Akpala, Oladipo, and Yurtsaven are out. Oladipo uh, is getting close, though, so that's going to change that rotation when he does get back. So tough to say there. I mean, let's just say all of them are out. I mean, the guys that you want to look at immediately for me are Bam, of course. He'd be super high-owned, uh, you know, and Pirtle's out on the other side. So Bam's going to be very popular and deservedly so. Um, also, Gabe Vincent, he's surprising, surprising stats. If you really look at what he's done, you know, since Lowry's out, He's been very steady, very good statistics, a lot of minutes. Um, so if Lowry's not back yet, uh, Gabe's price has stayed the same. He's pretty tough. Um, doesn't get much more clear on the San Antonio side. DeJounte Murray, arguably a you know, top five DFS performer this year, uh, he is questionable. Also, Doug McDermott is questionable. Uh Four guys we know are out. Kata Bates, Jop, Collins, Landell, and Pirtle. As we say, Pirtle is a key because that brings in Eubanks and Landell uh, probably to split some of that center minutes to try to stop Bam. So very confusing here until we really know what the scenario is with who's in and who's out. Um, coming into this game, Miami plays slow, second slowest in the league at 29 Spurs 19th, so not playing fast either side. Miami is a top 10 D, they're eighth, and San Antonio's down to 20th. So, you know, again, where do you begin here? We need to know what the scenario is. If some of these guys are in, like Lowry, for example, got to believe he's on a minutes restriction. He's been out quite some time, so don't want to mess with any of that whatsoever. Uh, if Butler plays, he usually plays. There's no no limits with what he usually does. So if he's in at 9-4 uh, and it's a go, I'm, I'm very interested there. Bam, as I said, either way, Butler in or out, but even more so if he's out, at 8-4 becomes a key play for me with that power forward center eligibility. Uh, certainly may go there. Uh, again, with the shuffling of who's in and out, Tyler Hero at 6-2 is also a solid play. Uh, if Gabe Vincent does get sent back to the bench at 4-4, I won't go there. Um, but if he's starting and Lowry's still sitting, I think Gabe's a great play. Uh, the scenario could shuffle where Butler sits and Caleb Martin starts. And at 3-4, uh, he is produced. So we got to see what the news is. And we'll adjust this game because I think people are going to be confused and stymied here when they first uh, build their lineups, and we're probably not going to have this news, maybe a little bit of it, but not all of it, uh, before the 7 o'clock lock. So I may be strategically placing a, a Heat or Spur guy in here and then making sure I have a plan uh, for the two 10 o'clock games where if I need to pivot out, I can get out and put equal value in in those late games. So I do want to have exposure to this game. I like it. But uh, again, you have to have a plan uh, if you have to swap out when we get the news. And there will be plenty of guys in those last two games to, to swap to. Uh, Spurs, if, La if Murray's in, you know, 10-3 against a Heat defense. If the main guys are in for the Heat defense, probably not going to go to that big number. And, uh, but Murray's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if he is dinged and questionable on top of that, though, you know, that's a big price to play, uh, pay against a top-notch defense. Not that he couldn't get there, just not somewhere where I'm going to put uh, my dollars. Derek White's coming back, uh, two at 6K. He's in play. Uh, really don't trust the rest of the guys. I mean, you've got that whole thing. It's the first night of a back-to-back. -back. You could get popped here on top of it. 
Good luck figuring out if, if McDermott's in him, Johnson, Eubanks, Walker, Vassell, Primo, who's been playing. He finished the game the other day at 3-4, so he's a guy to keep an eye on. If Murray doesn't play, Trey Jones absolutely could be a great play. So there's a lot of possibilities there, but nothing that I feel comfortable until uh, we know who's uh, who's playing for sure. So let's move on to the two 10 o'clock games to close out this slate. The first one is the Sacramento Kings at the Golden State Warriors. You have Golden State favored by a big 13. So our only initial look at does this game blow out scenario. It is a 223 and a half total, which is decent. 105.25 for Sacramento. A nice healthy 118.25 for the Golden State Warriors. For Sacramento, De'Aaron Fox questionable for like the millionth day in a row. And he has not been playing, so you can't count him in until we hear he's definitely in. Um, uh, Bagley also questionable. He missed the last game. That's another piece of news that we uh, need to know. Davis out. Golden State, Otto Porter's the only questionable tag. Other than that, uh, Bielitsa, Draymond continues out. Iguodala and Weissman, those four are out. Interesting. Set a second night of a back-to-back for Sacramento. So I, I guess we could sort of say maybe Fox will finally play. And I'm not going to play him because he's been out for so long and that scares me. Uh, but it does take a big shot from Halliburton uh, and him being a key play. So in my initial builds, I know it sounds crazy and it's risky and I just made fun of him, but I think Fox might play. So Halliburton's probably not going to make my first build for that reason, but I am going to have some swappability available if I do want to move to him. Um, Sacramento is sixth in the league in, in pace. Golden State is 13th, so we're going to get up and down uh, that 223 and a half number solid. Defensively, Sacramento is second worst in the league, 29th. Golden State remains best defensive team in the league. So that scares you a little bit also on the Sacramento side. And this game could easily get away from Sacramento if Golden State plays one of their efficient, sharp games. Uh, where am I looking here? It's it's a hard call. You know, I right now, if you want to go value, I guess Barnes at 6 1. Uh, Holmes is only 5K, which he just hasn't played tons of minutes or done very well, but you always see that price and he's tempting. Um, healed off the bench at 5-2. Davion Mitchell's been very, very good filling in for Fox at 4-8, but I'd prefer him starting than coming off the bench, that's for sure. Met 2 could sneak in for a little bit at 3-9, but you know, not a real targetable team here against a, a really solid Golden State team, um, especially it's their Sacramento second night of back-to-back -back on the road. Uh, the main guys are all playing for uh, Golden State. So very scary game as far as that goes. And it really carries over to the other side. You know, 10-4 for Curry. Yeah, he's a terrific play every night. But do they need full run from Steph in this game? I mean, uh, I did have him last time. There was that question mark and he it was stayed close and he crushed it. But it very easily could go the other direction. So it's a tough a uh, hard commitment at 10-4, um, but, you know, at least worth a consideration. Clay at 6K, much more palatable, and he's getting more and more fit and looking more like himself each game. Still not there yet, but he's been off. You know, he had been off for a year and a half, so uh, he's progressing nicely. I'm sure they'll have him in tip-top shape for the playoffs when they come around. Wiggins at 6'7", you know, we know he's had that chip on his shoulder to prove he deserved to start in the All-Star game, which he doesn't, but that's another point. That uh, that buzz, I think, wore off. He's had a few games to prove that, and I think it's 6'7", with both Curry and Thompson in there. He shows a direct plummet in usage uh, when, when Thompson plays, so I'm not looking at Wiggins either. Uh, Porter at 5K has been solid. You know, he can be considered... In a pinch, Looney's not the worst guy. I know I used to also dog him, but at 5'2", the guy gets minutes, the guy gets rebounds, and once in a while he'll score a few buckets for you. So 
if he's uh, a guy that you need to pay down to to make a lineup work, it's not he's not the worst play. Rest of them, you know, it's going to be interesting. Jordan Poole had that complete breakout game when all the guys sla- uh, sat this last game. They're all fresh uh, on the Golden State side. So I don't know how much run does Poole get. Uh, six threes, a pretty big tag if you're chasing that last game. I just don't think he's going to get, uh, you know, really the opportunity. So I think he's a bit of a trap, to be honest, uh, even though he played so fantastic in that last game. After that, just a deep bench, uh, huge risk for Toscano, Anderson, Peyton, Kaminga, Moody. Yes, they've all been playing, uh, but not too risky for me, especially in cash hybrid, uh, which, you know, those single game GPPs. All right, last game, 10 o'clock game, Los Angeles Lakers, LA Clippers, the double LA uh, home game where they play in the same gym. So that's pretty interesting. But the Clippers, are the home team. So you'll get to see Billy Crystal and all the Clippers fans uh, as opposed to uh, Jack Nicholson and the Lakers fans. So we will see here. It is the second night of a back-to-back for the LA Lakers uh, Island game for the Clippers. Again, Clippers favored by three and a half, 218 total, 107.25 for the Lakers, 110.75 for the LA Clippers. Uh, LA comes in 25 and 27, the Clippers 26 and 27. So almost identical battle in the West. So an important game there. Injury designations here. We have uh, two guys out for the Lakers, James and Nunn, and no other designations. They have Anthony Davis, not even probable. He's in. That's almost scary. I don't know if he has no designation, what to even think here. Um, Anyway, For the Lakers, Zubat is questionable. So that makes a difference uh, in their big man rotation. We had the Serge Ibaka 1% uh, lineup last time that got us to the number. I don't know if we'll be able to get to that one again, but we'll see. Uh, Guys that are out for the Clippers are George, Leonard, Preston, and Scrub. That is the way that game looks as far as injuries. Uh, As far as pace... Pretty solid here. Lakers 8, Clippers 14. Defensively, Clippers uh, are 6th. So they they have played good defense with this lineup, which has really impressed me without their their studs in there. Lakers are 17th, so below average defense, uh, even though they've been trying to play good defense by starting Avery Bradley and Stanley Johnson. So uh, good luck with that. Second night of the the back-to-the-back, for the Lakers, how does it affect things here? You know, Anthony Davis at 9-8 absolutely smashed for us last night. He was my MVP for that after hour slate, got it done for us. Uh, is he full go here? Uh, I'm waiting to see what news comes out during the day because I just don't trust that there's no designation on him on a back-to-back. So will he be ruled out? We'll have to see. Uh, is he can at least be probable or questionable. It hasn't come out yet. It's still uh, 10.45 Eastern in the morning right now, a 9.45 here in snowy day. Oh, my gosh, it's still snowing like crazy. Good Lord. Um, In snowy Dallas, it's 9.45. So we don't have any of that early news on Davis, but you got to keep an eye on it because it changes everything. You know, you can start talking in those scenarios about guys like Russ at 9.6, Monk at 5.8. And then Davis at 9-8 if he plays. If he doesn't, those shots are mostly going to go to Westbrook, Monk, and Carmelo Anthony off the bench at a clear 5K. So potential there. Uh, Again, news uh, is imperative uh, in that situation. For the Clippers, it looks like if Zubats is in, uh, they just have their regular lineup. Jackson, Coffey, Man, Morris, and Zubats, uh, which has been their lineup for a while. They're hanging in there with it. And you get some good deals. I mean, you know, you can definitely take a shot here on great value. Reggie Jackson, 5'4". Amir Coffey, 5'6". Terrence Mann, 3'8". And Marcus Morris, 5'7", back in the mix. Uh, If Zubat sits, then Serge Ibaka at 3'5", becomes an option. But they also have Isaiah Hartenstein at 3'2". So 
Uh, Batum, if he's off the bench at 4-4 or slides into the lineup, same scenario with Bledsoe at 4-5. So they have a bunch of value guys, and it's just a matter of seeing who's slotted into play and what the best matchups are. But definitely going to have some exposure here to this game as well. I like this game a little bit better than the Sacramento Golden State game, the other game at 10, because I think this one stays competitive uh, for sure. I, I like the matchup here better. Uh, really, again, like I say, a home game for both teams. So uh, you've got you know no travel. They should be uh, feeling pretty good, even though it's a back-to-back -back for the Lakers. Uh, you know, it's in that same Coliseum. So should be a fun one. Lots of interesting plays. There's not the, the you know, multitude of gigantic pay up awesome options like the Embiid's, Lucas, Jokers, those guys, none of them are playing. So your pay up decisions are going to be key today. And I think you're going to get a lot more medium level builds than we've seen in a long time. Now, as the day goes on, if a bunch of guys are out, then you're going to have you're going to get steered back to the stars and scrubs kind of lineup, but for now I think you're going to actually be able to take a good look at this, a uh, little bit of buy ups here and there, but not like up to twelve eight and all the crazy numbers we see with some of those studs. But you're going to be able to buy up to nine five nine nine ten ten one, and this way you can still get some medium build guys in there and not have to go for just strict value. So. I really like the card. I think it's going to be a fun slate tonight. Uh, and then tomorrow, again, is going to be fantastic with a nine-gamer. Uh, so great NBA time uh, to get involved. And we'd love to have you join us, dfscoachtalk.com. Come on in for any of our memberships. Uh, even if it's the three-day for 10 bucks, it's worth a look. Dip those toes into the water, into the a snow pool like we have here in Dallas. All right. Thank you so much for listening in, spending this uh, time with me on your Thursday. Uh, have a fantastic day. Stay safe, stay warm. And I'll definitely be back tomorrow when we look to crush it in NBA DFS.